All right, we are recording. Welcome everybody to week eight. Carol, good to see you. Everyone else, good to see you guys. Uh, if anyone knows what this fireflies.ai note taker is, we're wondering Not if me. it's a bot. Or a... <laughs> I don't know if I remove it, they can't come back in. And if it's an actual student, I hate to do that. But uh, anyway, welcome, folks. Week we eight. Are recording. Welcome, everybody. We're, we're, oh, eight. I hit. I hit. Carol, good to see you. Pause on myself. Good again. to see you guys. Uh, stop it. Okay. Here we go. Voices in my head. All right, let me share my screen and we will get going. I hope not to take up too much time uh, today because we're into that point where we're actually, um, we're just uh, working on stuff. So are my slides coming through there? Beautifully. All righty. All right, so let's start off. Any questions, concerns, queries, conundrums, or celebrations that anyone has to share? before we dig in. All right, hearing none, we'll move forward. Um, just an update, I finally was able to A, figure out what was going wrong and B, uh, implement the fix that I needed to do to share out that uh, innovative discussion post Canvas course. Uh, if I follow the link here, it should open right up. Uh, what I didn't realize is that since the original examples were made as actual uh, discussion prompts, that you can't be anonymous and view a discussion prompt. That's why, so you can get into the course, but it was prompting people to log in once they uh, try to open one of the examples. So what I've done is just turned them into pages uh, and they're all there as publicly viewable open pages. You can copy paste, do whatever you wanna do with those. Take a look, there's a lot of fun ones there. Uh, the bumper sticker, haiku discussion, acrostic poem, kind of fun. And then uh, I didn't mention it before, but there's actually some icebreakers, some fun things to use at the beginning of a class or year. Um, this Disney one, what Disney character would you be if you were one? Include a uh, you know a video clip of that character and then describe why that would be you. Uh, you know, what movie is the soundtrack or song or is the soundtrack of your life? So some fun ideas there, some good examples and and uh, fun things to do. And it's ready to be shared and explored. So that link is there and uh, feel free to, to uh, steal away. Uh, all right. So let's uh, start with the element presentations this week. We'll get that out of the way and then we'll uh, review what the week to come has in store for us. So this week we're going through elements 24 through 28. Uh, noticing when students are not engaged, using academic games, managing response rates, uh, using physical movement, and maintaining a lively pace. Uh, and so all of those uh, topics there that are linked, those have been submitted. We didn't get one from Melissa J as of yet, um, but the rest of them are, are there and well done. I enjoyed looking through those and I hope you go through and review those at your own time. Uh, but our presentation of the week belongs to Academic Games by Don C. So let's take a look at that and review uh, her submission. Element 25 is Academic Games, and this is something I'm sure that we're all very familiar with and use in our classroom. Um, presenting information in a game format, whether it's teaching kids using a game, or reviewing concepts that you've previously taught can be very engaging. Um, and I think the competition when presented in a game format is very motivating to some students. Um, it also increases participation. I know personally for me in the classroom, students who typically would not participate do so more when they're um, able to participate in games. So um, technology can clearly be used to kind of advance the classroom game. Um, the text provides a lot of good suggestions for even using technology to kind of enhance and change up some of common games that typically aren't. Um, their suggestions are playing what is the question, which is a Jeopardy type game. Um, they have a few suggestions on how to enhance that with technology, including a Prezi, um, which I hadn't necessarily thought of initially. PowerPoint is kind of my go-to for that Jeopardy style. Um, 
game. So it was interesting to kind of take a new perspective to maybe use a different program. Um, and then they also present a game of classroom feud similar to Family Feud. Um, their suggestion also when using technology is if you use polling systems that this gives students a chance to participate in a whole class contribution um, rather than only calling single students to provide answers. Um, another good piece of advice was to use electronic name generators. If you are going to call on students to provide answers, um, kind of lets you do the random thing while using technology. And then Quizlet, Kahoot, Skim Kits are all ones that I'm sure you're very familiar with. Okay, some fun examples there. Um, I think we all like playing those games with students and they enjoy it as well. Sorry, I'm, my voice is still, I'm still trying to build those voice muscles from being sick for a week. A pop in a cough drop. All right, any questions or comments on that video there? Element 25 is active. Go on there. Um, if you do, pop them in the chat or open up your mic while I uh, review those who are coming up next week. Uh, we're going through elements 29 through 32, uh, demonstrating intensity enthusiasm. Armella, Trevor, Zach, and Amy using friendly controversy, Marshall and Kevin providing opportunities for students to talk about themselves, Scott and Shay, and presenting unusual or intriguing information, Amy and Anna. Uh, the text element sign-up sheet is there for those specific ones. Any other comments, questions? I can't see you, so if you do, open up your mic or pop them in the chat. Okay. And nothing in the chat, Clint, yet, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to give that wait time, you know? Uh, okay, so reminders, these are things that are going on currently and you need to be kind of working on as we go. Uh, should be starting your uh, in your technology integration project uh, plan, collect those student artifacts as you're going along. Um, to borrow a term from adult learning theory, we want you to be reflecting in action which means as you're going along, give it some thought, think about how it's going, if it's going well, cool. How can you improve what's happening? If it's not going well, how can you adjust and um, uh, change your plan to make that, that uh, more successful? And then if you still need a conference with this, ask questions, uh, please reach out anytime. We're happy to, to uh, do what we can to help. Uh, all of your text element flips are due this week, uh, even though if you're presenting weeks 9 through 12, if you're signed up for those, uh, we still ask you to have those all wrapped up and finished this week so that you've got the next couple of weeks solid to uh, focus on your technology integration project and finishing up your portfolios for uh, the end of the course, which is coming up sooner than you think. Um, on your text elements, please add a shareable link on that signup sheet and then post. Uh, just when you're on Flip, there's a, a share button there and it'll give you a link to, uh, to your videos there. And then make sure you post your link the week you presented and the topic you presented on to the assignment for this week, no matter when you've presented. And then if you have not filled out uh, the week two assignment B that says, this is the topic I've signed up for, uh, go back in and, and fill that up while you're while you're thinking about your text element presentations. And then uh, be adding stuff to your digital portfolio. This week we are working on peer reviews. So if you would like to have feedback, you may want to make sure that you actually have stuff uh, for folks to provide feedback for you on in your portfolio. So make sure you've added a few uh, projects from the last few weeks and a reflection. Uh, we ask you to reflect on one of those uh, four projects for the last week in your portfolio and your, your teaching philosophy video and things like that. Uh, Tamara has a question. Yes, thank you. Yep. Can you read that or you didn't mean to read it to you? Uh, I got it. I've got the Good. chat up here. Uh, it says, uh, I have a, sa a question about the sample student project at the end. Don't want to publicly share the work that my students have been doing. You only provide an example that I have created. I uh, actually talked with one of my learners this week about this very same thing. Uh, so what you can do is 
if your students are shown in your in your video and photos, whatever else, um, don't don't put it in your portfolio because that's open to the world. Um, but if you just submit that as if you want to like put those in a Google document or slideshow or something like that, or just put links uh, on the technology project assignment uh, and submit those to your to your um, to your instructor. We're the only ones that see any of those comments or submissions for the assignments. So unlike the discussions where everybody in your section can see that stuff uh, on the assignments, anything you share there um, is only viewable by your instructor. And that's that's closed enough and secure enough to where we don't have to worry about uh, student privacy and stuff like that. Does that answer? Yeah, so it doesn't need to go in the portfolio. Uh, but, you know, we still want to have some some kind of student. So you don't need to put like every student artifact in there. Uh, so if it's pertinent, share it with your instructor, but still would like to see, you know, some evidence and things like that in your in your portfolio. That sounds like it answered your question. I appreciate it. It's, and it's a, it's a perfect question. Um, anything else? See, and I'm mostly pausing so I can take a drink and not lose my voice. Don't lose it. I think I'm doing okay. Okay. So a uh, couple of things on the portfolio. Uh, make sure you have some rough draft types of things in your portfolio, things that uh, the link that you shared, you know, that portfolio link that you shared <coughs> a few weeks back. And again, uh, remember these peer reviews are, it's extra credit if you want to do it. If you'd like to have some someone review uh, your portfolio, make sure that you've um, put the link in the peer review doc. There's quite a few of them in there. Uh, and if you've put one in there and you want some review, then the way that you pay that back is that you do a couple of reviews uh, yourself. The rubric's there and also in the assignment for this week. When you click the link, it'll prompt you to make a copy of it. Um, I don't want to make a copy of it, so I'm just going to change it to view here. But if you click make a copy, uh, it will create a new document for you. It, save it in your drive and it's ready to go. Uh, put your name here, the name of the person being evaluated, put that in there. And then if you just want to, uh, like if they scored uh, exemplary on this one, you know, you can do it by uh, changing the highlight color or something like that. Um, I don't want to do that because this is the actual <laughs> document. Uh, or you can put a score in this little column right here um, with your feedback there and go through those, those I think, five, five different prompts. Uh, provide that feedback. And then at the bottom, uh, I thought we had some a spot for some, some notes. Uh, I'll put that in there. I'll put that in there. So leave some notes or anything else you want to say down there. Uh, at the bottom. And then once you're done, hit share, make it so that anyone with the link can view it. It'll be listed as restricted by default. Change that to anyone with the link. Uh, whoops. Copy that link and then put that link back into the uh, peer review doc, which is also linked there. And right here. So say I reviewed Sherry's, I say review that and then link it hit uh, whoops hit the link button up there and then paste in the document there uh, the link or if it's there in your recents you can do that right there all right so i hope that makes sense again extra credit it shouldn't take too much time you know maybe five minutes or so for each one so it's it's a valuable uh use of your time and hopefully we'll provide some help for you and some feedback there. Um, so that's the extra credit assignment for this week. Uh, upcoming due dates. Uh, and just a reminder on week 12, we're not going to have a live seminar. Week 12 will lump weeks 11 and 12 together and post that for you on week 11. Uh, I will be the one doing that. I'll pre-record it and I'll post that during the week and you can just watch that. Um, whenever you need to see it. Uh, our class ends on April 5th and 100% everything needs to be submitted and completed by 1159 on the 5th. 
uh, this course is a, it's kind of pass fail. And if you don't complete all the assignments, uh, we we can't pass you for the course. And I, I hate, I actually had to do that last semester with one of my learners and it was painful and we had a good conversation about it and uh, we're working on a way to move forward, but uh, please, please don't put me and your other instructors in that situation. If you need some help, please reach out well before the fifth and we'll work with you. Uh, the road ahead, this is what's coming up for the next few weeks. This week, uh, work on your technology integration project, work on those portfolio peer reviews and finish up your text element presentations. If you've got that done and submitted, uh, you're, you're all set. And next week, work on your technology integration project and do any revision from the feedback based or based on the feedback from your peer reviews, getting those things ready. There's no assignments, weeks nine or week 10 that are due. It's just time to work on your technology integration project and your portfolios. And then week 11, your technology integration project with student artifacts and reflections and all that kind of stuff that's due week 11. And then week 12 is your final uh, portfolio do with everything else. Pausing for questions. And probably a question for me, and maybe we can do it later. And I know I'm putting you on the spot because you're not prepared for it. I apologize. We may have some and maybe many that want to take the next class, the 5020 class in the summer. Has that been advertised on uh, UEN yet? Good question. I actually had a uh, learner ask me about that today. Um, they have not asked us for those yet. Um, but what we'll do is if we don't get it by week 11, uh, we'll make sure to share that out through uh, course announcements um, bef you know, before those are coming up. So we'll, we'll get you in. We'll make sure that there's, there's room for everybody. But that, that'll probably happen and be ready to go by, you know, end of March, early April for sure. So good question. Um, do you want to reach out to Justin about that or do you want me to? Or I'd be happy to. I'll be happy okay. to. I'll get a follow through. Okay. Great question. Anything else? Okay. Just a couple more things. Uh, this week, we're talking about engaging students. And again, the we're actually to the point where our element presentations meet up and match up with the uh, items in the chapter for the week. So we're talking about, you know, student games and engagement and, and all those kind of fun things. Uh, and we do talk about, you know, the... You know, rigor and relevance with your with your work. And I, I kind of like this chart. I, sh I should have made it bigger. Um, but as far as the, the rigor goes, uh, this is the application model. So if it's light on rigor, the teacher's doing most of the work. If it's heavy on rigor, the student's doing more of the work. On relevance on the vertical scale, if it's not very relevant, student or teachers are doing all the work and trying to feed it to students. The more relevant it becomes, the more the students are going to be thinking. And if we can meet, match those two up and maximize both rigor and relevance, student is working and thinking. And that's kind of where the real magic and learning happens. So uh, again, keep that in the back of your mind this week while you're reading about engaging students. Um, and then our discussion this week is we're going back to and kind of looking at online models again a little bit. It may feel a little similar to last week. But what we want you to focus on, we're, we ask you to make a little chart um, and focus on what kind of things uh, are done well in the online arena and what things can only be, uh, can only kind of take place in a brick and mortar school setting and an in-person setting. And a couple of, you know, things th there that kind of pop out, you know, campus community engagement, exposure to diversity, uh, learning with your peers. It's more easily facilitated uh, in an in-person, uh, place-based setting. So that's kind of the focus of the discussion this week, kind of pros and cons of online versus in-person learning. Uh, okay, and so what, what's going on this week? Your discussion about online models, your text element flip presentations, make sure those are all submitted and wrapped up. 
and then for extra credit peer review of those portfolios. And hopefully that's kind of a light week for you. We're, we're encouraging you to spend that time and effort you've been spending on these weekly projects. Uh, now it should be just work on that technology integration project, gathering those student artifacts and thinking through, thinking, reflecting in action uh, as you go. Uh, we've got a few conferences coming up. Super, super excited about USET. Uh, all of your instructors are going to be there. It is going to be an incredible conference. Um, and I'm, I have to say I'm a little jealous because I was the president last year and the conference this year is going to pale in comparison to, to the conference that I helped put together. We've got so many great speakers and people coming and uh, we have we have oversold all of our partner expo vendor areas. So there's going to be a ton of companies there to learn from and to uh, see what's what's new and exciting in, in ed tech. There's going to be so such great speakers. Uh, First Lady Abby Cox, Superintendent, State Superintendent Sid Dixon, uh, and a lot of great leaders and stakeholders from around the state, uh, including our own Tony Pellegrini, uh, will be speaking at the conference and just loads and loads of great sessions uh, are planned. So I can't sell it to you enough. Uh, there's still room for uh, for registration. The slide there, I'll link you to it. Um, there are one day options you can attend. If you can't make it the Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, you can attend just Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and there's also uh, $25, I think it is, uh, virtual attendance options. So we just want to uh, taking a few things online. That is an option as well. And then the summer in July in Price, we've got our Rural Schools Conference. We've just got our call for proposals out right now. Uh, and it's going to be another great conference. And again, we encourage you guys to present and earn some serious extra credit. Uh, those The call for proposals is due before the end of this class. So if you do submit something, uh, just all you have to do is submit because we're not going to actually have those selected before we're done with the class. So uh, maybe a little loophole there for you. Just take the time to put together a submission and uh, get some get some help for this class if, if you are so inclined. So I'm going to stop talking and stop sharing my screen. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, anything, please reach out to your instructors and I'm going to say. Thank you and stop sharing my screen and see what's happening out there with, with anybody if there's any questions. I just have one question for Carol. Carol, is it cold up in Weber, up in, up north of Salt Lake? It is very cold today, <laughs> even though it's not snowing at the moment anyway. And there was sunshine a little bit today. It's pretty cold up here. <laughs> You look I'm, like you're I'm, staying warm. We love it. Yeah, I'm out at a school right now. So I, yeah, it was just one of those things. So, and I'm a little bit behind on grading for my section, but I promise I'll get caught up just I'm to too. let everybody know. I am too. I'm working on it. Anything else? Sherry asked a uh, question on reflections on the project. Should the reflections be in uh, one location or can they be written under the student examples? Um, yeah, like one document. Uh, if you want to make like a Google Doc and put all that stuff together, that's totally appropriate. Does that make sense? Is that answering your question, Sherry? You can turn on your mic if you want. Okay, sounds good. Well, nothing like bad or melted down or anything. So maybe this fireflies thing will maybe. Maybe we'll get something cool back when I end the meeting. I don't know. Or maybe maybe this will be our last Zoom meeting because we've been taken over. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thanks, everybody. 